Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of This Can't Be That Hot. <laughs> Do you think that I should have some sort of like silly fireside chat intro? I sort of think maybe I should, but then every time I try doing something like that, it feels hokey and I feel like an idiot, so I'm probably going to erase this. <laughs> I am very excited about this episode that I just recorded. So funny story. This episode almost didn't happen. I got a pitch from a publicist. Uh, I get a lot of those these days. And the topic, which is PR, is a great one. I love that topic. You guys have heard me talk about it on the show uh, with Gloria Chow before. But when I got the pitch, I had literally just dropped that episode with Gloria. And I was like, well, I I can't really, I'm not going to record another one of these and drop it that soon. So I was Getting ready to respond and say thanks, but no thanks, maybe later, maybe sometime in the future, when my assistant piped up and said, oh, yeah, I know that woman. Like she knew her through a mastermind that she was in or something like that. And I was like, oh, uh, well, tell me more. What do you think? And she was like, yeah, she's great. I think she's, you know, she's super cool. And I (laughs) far be it for me. When I've got like a personal recommendation, right? I mean, this is speaks to the power of personal recommendations. But when somebody can sort of attest that somebody is a good guest or would be a good expert to have on, I was like, okay, so let's schedule it. But maybe we won't schedule it for right now. We'll we'll like bump it up for some time in the future. I just finished this conversation and was like, I don't know, you know, it can be hard to get a real sense of somebody or get to be you know, friends. And I, I want to use that term loosely because again, like this is, it's somebody that I met for 40 minutes on a, on a call. However, we totally clicked. And over the course of our like chat after the, uh, after the call, it came up that she's going to be in town. And so by the time you hear this episode, we will have already gotten together for coffee. And the moral of this story (laughs) is that These are, this is just one example of the many kinds of connections that putting yourself out there can form, right? Uh, I would never have known who this person was, much less like signed up to get together with her. Heck, I may end up hiring her. You guys are going to, I think, see what I mean and see why I feel that way once you've listened to this episode. We've covered PR on the show before. It is one of the strategies that I think is just grossly underutilized in the photography industry. If you are, you know, trying to stand out from the crowd and the crowd is all going over toward social media or running ads on Instagram, maybe you should look for a different channel and maybe this channel is it for you. Whether that idea has resonated with you in the past or not, I strongly encourage you to listen with an open mind today unless you happen to be one of the 5% maybe of photographers who's like, I'm so booked, I can't even imagine having more inquiries. Then I think that this should be something that you consider. Anyway, that's enough for me. You're gonna love this conversation and I will cue the music. Welcome to This Can't Be That Hard. My name is Anami Tonkin, and I help photographers run profitable, sustainable businesses that they love. Each week on the podcast, I cover simple, actionable strategies and systems that photographers at every level of experience can use to earn more money in a more sustainable way. Running a photography business doesn't have to be that hard. You can do it, and I can show you how. Christina, welcome to This Can't Be That Hard. I am so excited to finally get to meet you and um, and bring this uh, fun and sort of fresh perspective on PR to the show. Welcome. How are you today? I'm good. I am great. I'm so excited to be here. As you know, um, I've had a little bit of a scrambly morning. <laughs> had to do the kid drop off. People will understand uh, yes. that. I know that are listening today, but I'm super excited to get in front of your audience, talk about how we get visible and how we can grow our businesses through putting ourselves out there. Yeah. Well, this is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, anybody who listens to the show knows that I feel like photographers do not sing their own praises enough, even when they feel like they have like said it and said it and said it again, like, hey, hire me. I'm a photographer. I'm worth your time, all that sort of thing. We all need it a little bit more, but it can be hard because, you know, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, 
it is a matter of um, sticking to it. And you can, especially when you're wearing all the hats in your business, it can be really easy to let that start to slide and just feel like your message is out there. But it is like new clients, new eyeballs on the business is the lifeblood of any small business. Um, So it's really important. And I love your take on it. I'm excited to dive into uh, to PR from uh, from this perspective. So I'm going to let you kind of take over for a minute, give everybody the quick rundown of who you are and, and what you do, and then we'll go from there. I love it. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Christina Lankowski. I live in Boise, Idaho. Um, yes, people live there. Uh, <laughs> and I am one of them. Um, and I live over there. And I have been in the PR realm for almost 20 years at this point in the marketing and PR realm. So, um, you know, after school, I traveled and then I started to work for PR agencies. And I did that for a long time until I had my daughter in 2014. And at that point, like probably many of you that are listening are like, were like, you know, I'm good (laughs) on this like full time gig and kind of trying to do all this. And so I went off on my own and I started to, you know, just kind of freelance and do that type of work. And then eventually I had some, you know, people reaching out to me to ask about doing PR for their organizations. My particular area of expertise was tourism Mm -hmm. PR. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I had people reaching out to me about, you know, contracting and consulting. And I was like, yeah, okay. Did that for a while. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to have a course. Like I'm going to do a course about tourism PR. And like, obviously I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm not going to have to do anything. (laughs) Like this is going to be perfect. Passive income, right? Passive income. Yeah. Passive income. I just do it once and it makes me money over and over and over again. And well, when it came time to launch said course, I did what the gurus were saying to do, Mm -hmm. which was essentially dump a lot of money in ads, do webinars and have a, you know, email sequence on the back end and bada bang, bada boom, like you're going to make a million dollars, you know, or whatever. And suffice to say, it did not go that way. Right. Um, That is not how that that launch went for me. And I want to be very clear that this is a real facepalm moment in my life because my course was about publicity Mm -hmm. and I did no publicity (laughs) to promote it. So I just want like everyone to be clear where I was at right there. That is so so, uh, relatable. I was just the other day (laughs) talking to somebody about how terrible I am at getting my family photographed. Like, terrible. (laughs) And it is, it is the, it's the cobbler's kids have no shoes. It's 100%. But it's also, and you know, I can really relate to the whole, like, you decide you're going to try something new creating an online course, whatever. And because that's something you don't know, you do go to, and I'm using air quotes for anybody who can't see me, like the guru. (laughs) Um, You go listen to somebody, they tell you what to do. And it's like half your brain goes out the window. And I think that that's necessary to a certain degree. Like when we're trying something new, we kind of do have to go all in on like, learn how it's done before you go like charting your own course. But but it can be a facepalm moment where you're like, oh, it can absolutely be I a know better moment as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And you're, I mean, thank you for making me feel better. Yeah. You're right. Like I had to kind of have like a, I had to have a guide. Sure. Right. Yeah. I had to have a guide. And then I could use my own intuition after I tried that once. Definitely. Right. Yep. So I did it that once. It didn't work. My partner was definitely like, um, what are we doing here? Right. <laughs> I was like stuff. You don't even know, like, hold on, like, this is gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be a millionaire. Just yep. like, and um, so the next time I went to launch my course, and I promise this story has a point. You guys oh, no, no, I, but I the, the time I, the next time I went to launch my course, I was like, all right, now I'm gonna do it my way. And so I started to, this was 2018. Okay. So when I was launching for the second time, and so podcasts were getting bigger. Yeah. They weren't yet like in our national lexicon, like something that we talk about all the time that we're right. all doing, but it was something that people were starting to definitely pay attention to. And I was like, all right, I'm going to use my skills of at that point, you know, 15 years of pitching to start pitching myself onto podcasts. Mm-hmm. And I started to get myself on tourism, essentially tourism marketing podcast, tourism part podcast, things that were in my realm. Mm-hmm. And as those started to hit, the difference I saw in my business was night and day. Yeah. People reaching out to me about, you know, 
uh, consulting, people reaching out to me to see how they could work with me one on one, if I could come speak on their stages, buying my course mm-hmm. right off the shelf. And I'm talking about people all over the world, right? You know, that were that were doing this. And I was like, Oh, wow. Okay, so this is this is really what I needed to be doing from the get go. Mm-hmm. And the difference was, a, that I was getting in front of new audiences that hadn't ever, you know, heard of me before, but they were the right audience. But also, when someone hears you in their eardrum, they they relate to you. Mm-hmm. That know, like, and trust factor is upped so dramatically mm-hmm. by you talking about your expertise and what it is that you do that they were like, you know what? I am going to buy this multi-thousand dollar course from this person because they clearly do know what they're talking about. Yeah. You know, this is something that's their area of expertise. So I did that, you know, for a couple of years, it was going great. And then the pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. And when the pandemic hit, I saw the writing on the wall for tourism very quickly. Sure. Yeah. Tourism makes its money through hotel room stays. So I was like, if if that ain't happening, Mm-mm. then they're definitely not going to be doing publicity. So at that point, I'd already had a bit of an inkling to start teaching people how to do this work themselves. Mm-hmm. And so I just leaned in. I started to teach people how to pitch themselves onto podcasts, particularly women entrepreneurs, female identifying entrepreneurs, how to pitch themselves onto podcasts, how to get over some of the mindset stuff that might go into that, et cetera. And by the end of that year, by the end of 2020, I had so many people that were like, yeah, 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 this is great, but could you just do it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I started what is now my agency. I started out with just me and now we have grown to the agency we have today where we get entrepreneurs, particularly under-recognized entrepreneurs. That's our that's our area of expertise. So women, members of the LGBTQ community, members of the BIPOC community and neurodiverse entrepreneurs booked on podcasts full of their ideal audiences. We take that out of their hands. So all they have to do is show up and shine. I love that. I feel like... First of all, I want to applaud you for the thing that is my favorite thing about entrepreneurship, which is just kind of having this eye on the horizon and seeing, you Mm -hmm. know, where things are going and shifting your path accordingly, but staying because it's your Mm -hmm. business, you get to stay doing the things that you love and sort of continue to learn about the things that you love. My own journey has been pretty like winding. And I feel like I just, I love that sense of, I don't know. Let's see where this road leads. And um, and you've done so many cool things. Yeah, that's great. I also love your mission um, and the fact that you are centering, you know, women, members of the of underrepresented communities. I think that that is great. And um, and I love seeing that in an agency that is, you know, the whole point is promotion. Um, Exactly. And a lot of the people listening to this podcast are women. I certainly hope that they are representative of all different kinds of backgrounds. The thing that I think most of us have in common as photographers is this sense of like, well, yeah, I mean, I have expertise, but like who I don't know how that translates into getting in front of people. And maybe I don't have aspirations to start, you know, teach an online course or something like that. So I'm not sure how publicity applies to me if I'm like trying to get national press coverage in some way or like get on a a, a podcast or a, I don't know, YouTube, big mm-hmm. YouTube channel that is reaching all over the yeah. world. How is that going to help me and my bottom line? I think that this is a great question. And I also think it's important to recognize that there is an insane amount of value in getting in front of your local audiences, Uh right? This doesn't have to be a national, international thing. Now, you know, when we work with our clients, we're getting them on shows that they are going to get in front of a national and international audience. But that doesn't mean that those are the only type of podcasts that exist. You know, where I live in Boise, there's multiple podcasts that are focused on the local you know, happenings, what's going on here, what's happening here. There's local magazines, you know, even though that's not something we focus on, I obviously know the print world as well. There's all these places that you can be getting locally in front of your ideal audiences. And a great way to do that, you know, is to talk about, hey, what are the best tips to get the most out of your photography session? What are some of the seasonal things that you could, that are coming up that I could give some expert advice on, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going on to a show to just say, this is how much my package costs, Mm -hmm. you know, and this is how much X, Y, Z you're going on there to give value. You're leading with value. 
because that is what's going to up that no like and trust factor that I talked about earlier. Yeah. Someone's going to hear you on one of those shows. They're going to read you in one of their local mat read, not read you, but read about yeah. you in one of their, you know, local magazines, something like that. And they're going to be like, oh, wow, I got to find them out. And I want to find out more about them. Yeah. Right now, there's going to be some people that are going to be like, I'm just ready to buy. But most people are just going to become a lead mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Something that you then need to nurture a little bit further to get that sale. But you are getting someone in the door. And when someone comes on to my list or they book a discovery call or something like that off of hearing me on a podcast. They are 90 percent of the way there. Yeah, they are ready to spend money and we see this with our clients as well they 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 like me mm -hmm. they like what i have to say and they want to learn from me or they want to have my team do it on their behalf right and i think that that's such an important thing to remember is like this isn't a cold lead that's coming to you off here and you on a podcast they are a hot lead yeah that's coming to you yeah they're new to you but you're not new to them exactly yeah. exactly I don't know that name when it pops up as a new discovery call that's that's coming through. But when I get on, they they know about me. They're telling me something about they heard me on the such and such podcast. They really liked what I had to say about X, Y, Z. You know, how can they be getting the type of coverage that our clients are getting, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think that even if you're not in a position where you're interested in traveling to far distant places, that kind of exposure on a bigger scale. And because a lot of these are kind of evergreen avenues, right? So a podcast, right. somebody could listen to that the day that it drops, or they could listen to it two years later, yep. but they're still getting you. They're still learning you. And let's say that they have a sister who is expecting a baby in Boise, Idaho. And, you know, they're, they're yeah. going to like say, oh, I heard this amazing photographer and they're, they heard them in their ears like they don't even know what their photos look like, but they liked them mm -hmm. so much that they're like, I'm going to call up and get a gift certificate for my sister or whatever. Exactly. Um, I exactly. just feel like for, you know, 30 or 60 minutes of your time to sit down and record the potential for that to have a ripple effect really is um, is huge. And if you get to a place where you're comfortable in whatever capacity you are being interviewed or sharing your expertise, other podcasters or other journalists or other whatever are going to see that and say, oh, I need somebody for this story that I'm doing or this topic that I want to cover. And then you become kind of an easy go to. An easy go to. Absolutely. And there's so many ways to be leveraging the podcast interviews that you do. And I actually think that that is a huge misstep on the part of a lot of people is they do the podcast interview, they hit end on the, you know, Zoom or the Ecamm, and then it's like never to be thought of again. Right. Right. Like maybe they post it on the day that it goes live, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. But other than that, they don't use that content ever again. And I think that is such a misstep because one podcast interview can provide so much evergreen content for you. If you are someone that is struggling to come up with what you want to be posting on your social media, you should be guesting on podcasts mm -hmm. because you can take one of those podcasts and you can create multiple audio snippets, multiple pull quote cards, you know, have a blog post that's about the interview that you did that you can be linking back to. So for us, this is one thing that would drive me absolutely bonkers with our clients is we would get them on these amazing shows and they would, again, maybe post on the day that it went live. And that's wonderful. I want you to do that. But then they would not be using this content in perpetuity. And that is how you really get the ROI is not just posting it that one time, but posting different snippets of it, different pull quotes, et cetera, over and over and over again across all your channels, like LinkedIn, you know, Instagram, all the different places. And this is how you really get the ROI from being a guest on podcasts is using it over and over and over again. And we've seen for our clients that's gotten them job offers, that's gotten them speaking opportunities, all these types of things that have happened from them using that content repeatedly and not just the one time. Um, being on a podcast is the ultimate way for you to create a ton of content in one go. Yeah. And I mean, there are tools these days where you can take the uh, entire transcript from a podcast and, you know, use some sort of AI tool, transcribing tool yep. 
to um, pull different pieces out of it, create different, you know, and again, whether or not you want to use AI to generate the content, at least it's helping you generate the ideas and the sub ideas Mm -hmm. and sort of tease that out in a relatively quick way. But I'm really curious to talk to you more about the idea of working with an agency to do this kind of thing for you, because one of the Mm -hmm. things that I am constantly like preaching is consider outsourcing things that you are either not interested in doing or don't have the time to do, or it's not your zone of genius because we get into photography is a funny little business where you don't actually, it's small enough and simple enough that you could in theory do it all yourself, but the people who are doing it all themselves are limiting themselves. Like they think they're saving money, but ultimately they're limiting the amount of money that they can make and the amount of the number of hours in the day that they have. And I think that something like this PR, pitching to be on podcasts, whatever. I have no doubt that there are a lot of people listening right now who are like, yeah, that sounds cool for somebody else. I don't have time for that. I don't know what I would talk about. I (laughs) don't know who I would pitch. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to repurpose all that content. Like, I think that those are the kinds of things that get people stuck. So Mm -hmm. I want to hear more about like, who is a good candidate to work with an agency, first of all? And then like, what are the, what are you looking for? What are the steps to, to going about finding that? And then what, what are the goals too? Yeah, I love this question. I think it's great. And there's, there's working with an agency and there's also finding a publicist Uh and there might be someone locally for you that you could hire as your publicist, right? And they can be doing PR work for you. You know, they can be doing, getting you on those local stations, you know, getting you on local podcasts, et cetera. People seem to think that a publicist is like a very fancy and like expensive thing. And like, not until I'm a million dollar business owner, would I have a publicist and da, 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 da. If you have a story to tell, you should have a publicist. Okay. So the reason for that is they are going to get you those opportunities because just like you said, that's just time. Mm -hmm. You can get these opportunities, you know, yourself potentially, but it is just the time that goes into that. So finding someone that might already have those connections, somebody that knows how to be pitching correctly, that knows what stories are going to really hit. Those are the type of things that are just going to save you, quite frankly, a whole lot of stress and headache. Sure. Um, You know, that's a huge part of it. And for us, when people want to work with our agency, they're typically at the point in their business where they're like, I've built it to this based on my talent. Mm -hmm. You know, I I built it to this based on just being really good at what I do. But I know that if I want to grow this more, Mm -hmm. then I need to be getting in front of more new audiences. Right. Right. The right audiences, but I need to be getting in front of more people. And I think that that's such an important kind of inflection point that we all hit in our business at a certain time. Right. We all kind of hit this point where we're like, well, I want to, I think I'm ready. Mm-hmm. You know, I've hit like six figures, multiple six figures, just doing what I do. But now I'm ready to like, take this to the next level. I want to be traveling more as a photographer. I want to be doing this other stuff. So how do I kind of get there? And that's where an agency like ours steps in mm-hmm. and says, all right, let us help you get in front of the right people so that you can be growing your business in that way that you want to grow it. The things that you can be looking for, and I actually have an article about this on my website, which is like how to know if you're ready for a podcast publicist, is, you know, are you are you at that point where you're ready to go? Are you at the point where you feel like you have a grasp on your messaging? You feel like you kind of understand what you want to say? Now, by the way, that's something that we help with with our clients, but, you know, you feel like you're good in that way. The things that I would check for when I was looking for a publicist is talk to some of their former clients. Okay. So that's a really big, a really big thing. And most people, when they decide that they're going to work with us, like I always offer that up, but a lot of people will take me up on that. And I Mm -hmm. think that that's completely fair. Like you want to be able to chat with someone and be like, how was this experience for you? Sure. Right. Like this, you know, I, it's going to be an investment. So what does this look like? What did this look like for you on the, on the back end, et cetera? So I think that's a really great thing to do when it comes to publicity and PR. It is very hard to have a guarantee. Okay. Sure. That is something. And the reason is not because people are lazy. It is because the, 
media, you, you know, they can decide at any moment that they don't want to run something, right. right? They don't want to run something. They don't want something to happen, et cetera. But I do think it's important to kind of know what are those you know, what are the goals, right? Right. Like, what is it that we're trying to work towards? Now, in my agency, we do have a guarantee. We have a guarantee that we will get our clients booked on 24 podcasts over the year that we work together. Cool. And I do that because I felt like there was always a major disconnect between when I worked at agencies that I felt that there was always a major disconnect between what the client thought was going to happen mm -hmm. and what was actually mm -hmm. happening, right. right? So I've had this guarantee from day one because I want people to understand exactly what that's going to look like on the back end. Of course, I can't tell them what shows they're going to be booked on until we start pitching, but I am able to say, hey, by the end of the year, we will get you booked on at least 24 podcasts. Now, that is very rare, mm -hmm. okay? So please know that that's not a common way for um, you know publicists or PR agencies to work, but I do think that it's important for you to know that you are allowed to have goals, okay? Yeah. You are allowed to have expectations and they should be able to tell you if they think those expectations are realistic or not, okay? So please know that you are allowed to ask those questions. You're allowed to, you know, to have those things there, to have those conversations with them. Um, and I think that that's a really important thing to do. The other thing that I would like to mention, like that I would say people should probably have before they work, start to work with a publicist is make sure that you have a place to drive people mm -hmm. so that you can be getting those leads, right? Right. A place that's getting to your e-newsletter list. Maybe your social media channel is the top of your funnel, whatever it is that gets people onto a call with you or gets them buying your product, whatever that is, make sure that you have that set. Yeah. Because the worst thing to kind of do with publicity is to do it and then lose all those leads. Sure. Of course. Right. Because yeah. you don't have a place to capture them and just sending someone to your website probably isn't enough. Yeah. Okay. That, that isn't going to do it. Like at the end of this, it's not, if I was just like, yeah, just go to Christina Linkowski.com. Like people would be like, no, yeah, because like, what am I, what am I going to get there? What's what is the there? Step? Right. So I right. highly recommend having something that's like a freebie, you know, and you could ha easily have that be around you know, how to coordinate your outfits for the best photography shoot, right? Like how to do X, Y, Z, you know, you can have those be a really, it doesn't have to be detailed. It can just be like a simple thing that people can grab. That's going to put them onto your email list. Right. Cool. Yeah. And so I think those are kind of some of the main things would be talk to past clients, talk about the expectations, goals, and then make sure that you kind of have that back end ready to go so that you can be accepting leads. Yeah. When you take on a new client, I'm guessing that mm -hmm. a lot of them come with sort of like, this is the, the, these are the things that I am good at. These are the kinds of, you know, these are my areas of expertise. How much of that goal setting or like brainstorming do you do with them in that discovery phase to help tease out, you know, for instance, I feel like the curse of knowledge is a is a really big one when it comes to when I'm talking to photographers and they're like, I don't have anything to offer or I don't know what I would talk about. And it's like, well, you have this amazing client closet that you use. And sure, a lot of photographers know what that is, but a lot of other people are like, what the heck is a, is a client I don't know what that is. I was going to say, yeah. I, I chose that one yeah. in particular. And like, I could totally see, I mean, I'm just swinging for the stars here, hey, but like I could it. see Get like a segment on Good Morning America where somebody's like, there's this whole trend in photography now where like you don't have to dress yourself. You can, you know, your your uh photographer is going to double as a stylist. Something like that. Where mm -hmm. it's it's old news to you, but I feel like sometimes having a fresh or an outside set of eyes, somebody whose expertise is like what's going to be interesting in the in the bigger world could probably help you know, you don't necessarily have to show up or maybe you do, but you tell me, you know, does, does a new client have to show up with like a ready-made packaged, like this is what I have to offer or do you guys work on that? Absolutely not. Um, and I wouldn't expect them to yeah. um, come to us with that. That's why they're hiring us, right? So the the main thing that I ask a potential client is, who is your ideal customer? Yeah. Who are you looking to get in front of? 
like who do you know converts into business for you yeah and so that's the main thing that i want to know from them in order to know if we're going to be able to be successful right you know is that an audience that and for i'll be quite frank with you most most people yes they can be successful on podcasts like you know but i always like to ask the question sure. what is that do we feel like that's going to be a successful avenue. And then the very first thing they do once they hire us is have a messaging session. And that is to get really clear on, okay, what is our messaging? What are those topics that we think people are really going to resonate with? What is that call to action mm -hmm. that's going to bring people from listening to us on the podcast to, you know, joining our e-newsletter list, you know, kind of joining that funnel in that way. So that is the very first thing we do. We are also going to be doing all the research of the mm -hmm. shows that are full of that ideal audience. We do not expect clients to be coming to us with anything. Basically, our clients come to us and they're like, I would like to get on podcasts. <laughs> Here is my ideal customer. Here is the product that I have, that product or service, you know, that I have that I sell. We do every virtually everything else. Um, and so that that is the avenue that we're coming at it from is this isn't this isn't going to be taking a lot of brain power for you other than when you're the guest on the show of course you still have to be the guest right you're still the one that's gonna i can't be on the be on the show talking about what you do you sure. know but they have to be the guest and go on there but we also coach them on how to do that as well nice you know before they have their first interview they have a session with me where we break down this is how the interview is going to be structured here's the way you know the places to bring up x the places to bring up y here's where we're going to put that call to action in all that type of stuff so that they can feel really prepared you know going into that first interview and i'll tell you all right now like whether you work with an agency whether you do this yourself your first couple interviews you are going to sweat your way through okay <laughs> you are going to be so nervous you are sure. going to be like oh my gosh like what am i doing is this the right mic or my ear etc and please know that everybody feels that way. Mm -hmm. You are not <laughs> alone, you yeah. know, in feeling that way. And after you do the first couple of interviews, you will be so much more comfortable, so much more confident. It's going to just roll off the tongue. Like, you know, by the end of the time when our clients have done like 24 interviews at the end, they're just, other than like doing their research for the show, I mean, they're just showing up, right? Yeah. Like they're just there, yeah. you know, they're bringing their energy, they're bringing their information, but they're just calm as little cucumbers, you know, getting out there doing their doing their podcast interviews. And so, you know, we coach them through that as well, just yeah. with that knowledge of like, hey, sure. it's okay. It's okay. You to know, be you're going to listen to your it's okay to be new. Yeah, we were all new. You know yeah. what? I love that you said that because I have a keychain that sits right in front of me in my office and it says, have the courage to suck at something new. Totally. And uh, I absolutely, absolutely believe that 100%. Yeah. I think that you are going to do this the first few times. You're going to be so nervous. You might listen back to them, you know, a couple of months later and you'll be like, oh my God, like, why did I say that? Why did I sound like this? Whatever. But I want this to also serve as a reminder that that's why we don't pitch the big shows right off the bat. Sure. Right. That's yeah. why we wait to kind of be on these bigger shows because you got to get those jitters out. Yeah. You know, you got to, you got to kind of, you kind of got to smooth out the rough edges, you know, before you start to want to put yourself in front of shows that it is going to really, you know, matter how matter. you show up. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, no, that's, I think that that is great advice. And yeah, I mean, I'm sitting here sort of laughing to myself about, I have managed to not go back and like delete the first 10 episodes or 20 episodes <laughs> of this podcast just because like, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, even the hosts are new at some point and it is, oh, totally. Uh, yeah. It is, yeah, it's a thing. It, there's a learning curve to it. But at the end of the day, once you start to do it, it really is just conversations with people like that. that and yep. you do have the expertise. You absolutely do. And I think an important thing, if you don't mind, that I just no. want to kind of throw in here yeah. for folks is I want you to think about what's the worst that can happen. What do you think is the worst that can happen by showing up um, on a podcast? Yep. You know, and I ask people this question a lot. And the big things I hear back are, you know, I stumble over my words, I say something wrong, I'm worried someone's going to hear me and they're going to think I'm an idiot, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And I always say, those things can happen, mm -hmm. right? Those things can happen. That's just the fact of the matter. Like, and guess what? If you stumble over stuff, most of these aren't live. The host can edit that out, right? Yeah. Okay. So those things can happen. But I truly believe the worst thing that can happen is you do not put yourself out there and do this. If you do not get out there 
and put yourself in front of new audiences, your business will not grow. It won't. And I think that that's so, so important for people to hear is like, things might go wrong. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I probably swear three times per episode. Like things <laughs> happen all the time. Okay. Yeah. But it's all good. And honestly, it's what brings people to me. Mm -hmm. Right. They hear me on an episode. They're like that. That's me. Yeah. Who you're who you're talking to right now is not a polished Christina. You probably gathered that. <laughs> but just regular old Christina. Yeah. You know, and to people, that is what really draws them to you. Right. Right. Is they're going to hear you. They're going to hear the real you. You're going to be having this conversation. Basically, right now, I'm just having the conversation. You know, and it's being recorded. You know, who anime is getting is, is me, mm -hmm. Christina, right, in this conversation. So please know that that is what brings your customers to you. Yeah. And so doing that and being you, that's what you got to do. Yeah. And we all talk about vulnerability and the importance of that in your marketing and your whatever. And like trying to write an Instagram caption that doesn't come across as like, uh, I don't know, Pedantic. dumping your crap yeah. onto the page, yeah. whatever. I mean, we all struggle with that. Like, what do I write that's not when you're just having a conversation, but you're willing to get out in front of a larger audience and have a conversation about something that might be different than what other people think or whatever, that in and of itself is a level of vulnerability. And that you're totally right. There are going to be some people who listen and think this person's an idiot. That's not, I wouldn't even yeah. say that maybe that will happen. Like that will happen. Doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. But on the other hand, there will be people who listen and say, oh, that was really endearing and charming the way that person like stumbled through that thought. But, yeah. but like they were getting at the thing that they meant. I think, you know, you, your people will find you, but when you cast a wider net, more of those people will find you. I love that. I love that. And I think that that's, that's it right there. Yeah. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna attract people and you're gonna repel people. Yeah. But it's all a matter of getting in front of more people to have that opportunity to do that. And by the way, I mean, when I say you're going to repel people, that doesn't mean that I get angry letters from people no, being no, like, yeah. I heard you on such and such podcast and I hate you. It's just more that they're not going to sign up. Sure. You know, they're, they're not going to, you'll go never know you missed model. them. Yeah. I'll never know I miss them. Right. And that's perfectly okay. And on the flip side, you know, I have one of our publicists pitch me and I go on shows regularly. And I also have people that reach out to me in the Instagram DMs and they're like, I just heard you on like my third show. And like, now they're doing the reach out. Right. You know what I mean? Like, they've heard me a couple of times. Now they're like, okay, now I'm ready to like, see what this chick yeah. is all about. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's an important thing to remember too, is like, we have to be getting in front of our audiences over and over and over again for them to finally take an action step. Right. So yeah. the more you put yourself out there, you may be hitting the same people more than once. That's okay. Right. Right. That's no, okay. It's good. <laughs> It's a good thing. Yeah. Trust me on this. It's a good thing. Um, and as long as they're your ideal customers, it's worth it. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I look forward to getting photographers being pitched by you to my podcast. Yeah, let's do it. I like the way that you work. And uh, and I am excited for this to be more of a thing in this industry. Um, Christina, tell everybody where they can connect with you and uh, and how they should reach out. Christina Lankowski.com. Just kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. That's not it. That's not it. That's not even actually a website. My website is supposed to be my Christina.com. Um, so the best place to come find me is at podcastpublicityquiz.com. And that is a really fun interactive quiz that can tell you exactly where you might be in the journey, like whether you decide that you want to take this on yourself, which by the way, I'm team, I'm I'm all for that. Yeah. If you decide that you're like, I'm ready to pitch myself. I like I'm here for it a hundred percent. And then if you decide that maybe that's not the route you want to go and you're interested in potentially having our team pitch on your behalf, have those guaranteed bookings. There's also a way for you to apply for that program um, as well. That's right there at that podcast publicity quiz.com. Awesome. Which we will, of course, as always link in the show notes. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yes. I well, appreciate it. This has been a blast. I am. Uh, I really appreciate it your whole thing here. And I'm looking forward to, I, I know I'm not going to be the only one. Right. So thanks for taking the time today. And I doubt that it will be the only time. So I look forward to talking to yes. you again soon. 
Thank you so much. And I'm so glad to get in front of your audience. And I do really love all the work that you're doing to try to, you know, help photographers know that publicity is a really, really valid way to get out in front of their ideal audiences. So thank you very much for having me on. And I appreciate you doing that work. Pleasure's all mine. Well, that's it for this week's episode of This Can't Be That Hard. I'll be back same time, same place next week. In the meantime, you can find more information about this episode, along with all the relevant links, notes, and downloads at thiscan'tbethathard.com slash learn. If you like the podcast, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Even better, share the love by leaving a review in iTunes. And as always, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic week.